I know you. What's your name? Xander Cage. Triple X. There we go, buddy. morning on Fort Loudon Lake. Rarely fish this lake, mainly due to boat traffic. There are some really good fish. I'm Captain Mark Naraki. We got Stanley Hull sitting up front of the boat. We got him out fishing with us this morning. Tell us a little bit about what we're doing, Captain. So we got a deep ledge out here we're fishing. We're dragging some baits. We're using uh, Ace's technique, the spot and drag. So we're going down through this ledge, deep ledge. We're in 46 feet of water, dragging some baits through, mark some good fish on the fish finder. We'll go ahead and spot lock on her for a few minutes. Got vertical uh, rods in the front, uh, you know, our dragon rods out the back, and we're just seeing what we can pick up. We're about to go across that nice big uh, creek channel, or creek opening, and usually the fish are coming in and out of this time in the morning looking for that uh, morning breakfast. So looking to get on a few here. I see a lot of bait flipping in the water. I guess they've had either a thread fin or shad hatching. Uh, we're 46 foot of water, water temp. A little bit warmer than it is on Watts Bar. I was on Watts Bar yesterday. It's 82 degrees here this morning. That Watts Bar was 78 yesterday. It's a little bit warmer up here on the lake. Uh, I see you got boards out. Clear boards? Clear boards. Clear yeah, boards. I'll put a link right here where you can find the clear boards if you want to use planer boards. That's what we use, uh, both for catfishing and stripper fishing. And uh, we're out on our Sea Ark boat this morning. It's Captain Rocky Sea Ark Big Easy, 24 foot boat. Hopefully, we get some good drone footage of the boat today. Uh, but if you'd like to come out and fish with Captain and Rocky, give me a call uh, at this number. We'll get you booked. We'll get you out here on the boat. He takes a lot of my clients out. And of course, guys, in order to make the spot and drag happen, we have to use our Minn Kota Tarova trolling motor. Yeah. On, uh, we use the uh, iPilot feature, which helps us a lot to do this uh, remote and everything. But uh, yeah, um, guys, if you want to fish with either of us, please give us a call. But uh, I will tell you this much, I got the most comfortable boat. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Big Easy, this Big e Sea Ark Big Easy is nice. Uh, I'll put the Sea Ark link right here if you want to check out the Sea Ark Big Easy. But give us a call, man. Fishing's great all summer, uh, all through August, September, October. It's just actually, catfish is actually going to start getting better. Uh, flathead fishing in September is to die for. Uh, October is good, too, for blues and flatheads. Uh, flatheads will start going nor dormant a little bit mid mid October, uh, but blues just all winter long. Striper fishing good. Of course, any of you diehard fishermen that want to uh, do the winter trips, uh, we will. Uh, we're definitely here in the winter for sure. Yeah. So give yeah. Scott a call and book a winter trip. We're here all December, January, February. Uh, just uh, have to strap it on because it'll be a little chilly. We're using cut skipjack for bait and uh, we're just going to fish a little bit here and see what happens. So guys, stay tuned. Yeah, reel down on that thing. Reel down on it. Reel down on it. Alright. You need to take it out of the rod holder now. You should have them now. Stanley got one on this morning on the planer board. He hammered it too. Stanley put that left hand in front of that reel. That way that fish, if he pulls that rod, he'll have to pull that reel through your hand. There you go.
That's the way it was yesterday, man. I'd catch one. I was like, man, I got a monster on here. Did you see him slam that thing? Yeah, I seen him. I got it on tape, man. He slammed the crap out of it. Yeah. That's the way they were yesterday. I had one yesterday, Mark. I mean, he bowed the water, bowed rod down on water and then was holding it. Wasn't moving. I said, there he is. Down, it might be something different. Yeah. There he is, nice little Good day to start the bow. Nice little blue. Mark, when we release that fish, looks like it's a male. Beat up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Late, late spawner. Yeah. Fish with an attitude. Rest before you let them go. Yeah. Yeah, just. All right, here we go. So, what I run. I run a, a modified Carolina rig, uh, Santa Cooper type rig with the Demon Dragon. This one happens to be high fin blues. Um, I use a ADOT backstabber hook. Always snell your hooks. There's a on Wicked TV Outdoors. There's a really good snell snell knot uh, video on there. Uh, about uh, 18 inches, 24 inch leader to a swivel. And then I use a sinker slide here to snap on different things. Uh, because we're dragging today, I use a uh, drift stick, uh, something that pops over the rocks and stuff. If I need to anchor, I can unclip this, put on an anchor weight, throw it out there, and now we're anchored. So I don't have to retie or do anything different. So I use a 50 pound big game trilene on here for a nice, uh, nice leader line. What about your planter board? Where's it at? Planter board. Really nice clear boards, guys. Use these really good. Uh, they really pull the bait out nice. In fact, it's kind of hard to see, but I got one way out there already. At very low speeds, these are able to pull the boat, uh, pull their bait out really far from the, bait, uh, the boat. The reason I like dragging a lot, guys, is because if you're vertical drifting, you're straight under the boat. You're only covering, you know, eight, ten feet of water. When I run the boards, now I'm covering a hundred feet of water. And I can be on a ledge at 20 feet, and then I can also be in the main channel at 60 feet. All the depths are covered. Find out where the fish are real fast. So it's one of my favorite, favorite ways to fish. Let's get this one back out in the game. Let's, let's show them, Mark, how you how you put your planter boards out. What, what's your... All right, so in order to make this, this drag on the bottom, I cast it all the way out. sinks to the bottom. I'll let the sinker go all the way to the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, I will clip my planter board on. There, I went real shallow on this one, guys, right here by a creek channel. I only went down about 20 feet. And there's a right and a left of these planter boards. Click to my snap swivel on my line. And when I clip my my clip on here, it goes towards the rod, not towards the bait. It goes towards the rod tip. Clip that sucker on, and I will go ahead and throw it out in the water, let it drift back. After it drifts back, I don't know, 20, 30 yards, I go ahead and uh, close the bell, and it'll start pulling all the way out. Awesome. That's a good spread. Turn it on. Fish on. Fish on. Fish. Reel down on him, babe. Another one on. 
Yeah, you don't. He feels about like that other one. Did you sell your other camera yet? No, I still got it. I sold that camera. I bought another one I've got for sale. Yeah, I know. That's what I saw. That's what I got in this underwater camera. Yeah. That's a baby flathead. That's a baby flathead. That's a baby flathead. That's a baby flathead. Your camera on, Stanley? Yeah. Uh, keep that left hand in front of that reel. happen man to cover a lot more water you get a water spread when you get let the lines out like that and it's fun to bring them in yeah <laughs> enjoy the fight yeah you're gonna be hard pressed to get a flathead out look how he's shaking his head Way out there, wouldn't Yeah. Land one in. Both of them got hit. Nice. 
nice little blue in the boat. It's a female. The narrow head shows it's a female. All right, guys. So um, one of the things that happens when you're fishing for catfish, hold on one second, is when you bring a fish up on your leader line, sometimes that whole leader line is just slimed up. And other times there's nothing on that leader line when you bring it up. And I get a lot of questions of why is that leader line slimed up? So the catfish has a lateral line down at side and his whiskers. Two things he uses to taste the bait before he decides to hit it. If your line is, is uh, slimed up, that means that fish is just swimming on top of that bait, rubbing his body against it, tasting the bait to see if he wants it. So if you see a lot of tippity tap on your rod tip, that's just that fish just kind of hitting it, touching it, tasting it, see if he likes it. The other ones that just slam the rod right now and, and the rod tip never does any bouncing, that, that fish is just hungry, smelled it in water and just slammed it. And that's why you don't have slime on the line on the other side. So uh, that's the reason you get either a lot of slime on the line or no slime on your line like that. But also the slime protects the fish in the water since they have no scales. That's their protection against uh, bacteria and diseases and that kind of stuff uh, because there's no scales. So a little, little tutorial there. Generally speaking on size of catfish, what's the difference between a, if, you've, if you've got a down line down, you got a skipjack head down, what would be the difference between a five pounder approaching that bait versus a 50 pounder? Uh, the 50 pounder already knows he's used his energy and he's big fish. He's used all his energy to get to that bait. He is going to take that bait right now. The smaller fish, not so much. They don't burn as much energy. They're smaller, easier to move around. So he's going to play and nip and, and, and mess with the bait. Um, th that's the difference you're going to get. That's why when you fish with us, um, we can know, we know on the rod tip, if it's just dancing a little bit, we can tell you what kind of fish is going to be, whether it's going to be a small baby, teenager, you know, uh, adolescent, or, or a big, uh, big, uh, uh, mature fish. Now on flatheads, are they any difference on the bite between a male and a female? I have not noticed a difference. I just noticed that uh, it's either a very slow and then just straight down pressure, or sometimes you see that thing just put pressure on it and never move again. And they put it in their mouth and they're just laying there on the bottom. I've caught many a flathead bringing my rods up to go home for the day. He just happened to grab it and just laid there. Leaving the slime on the line, good, bad, doesn't matter? I don't think it makes a difference. Honestly, it might even help a little bit because another catfish comes by and says, whoa, wait a minute, I'm competing for, for food with this other catfish. He wanted to eat it, so I want to eat it too. Just like uh, a dog peeing on somebody else's uh, area. All right. I, 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 good, good thought there. I never thought about that. Um, alrighty, guys. We're going to get back to fishing. Stanley left hand in front of that reel, brother. Get a habit. Yeah, we'll help you. Uh, it out there. Oh, yeah. Decent, decent fish. Decent. Looks like decent. Good fish to quit on. Oh, yeah, nice little boy.
with them. Yep. Good fish. Yeah. He's sucking on the bottom, a couple of leeches on him. He got he got he 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 ain't ate in a while. He's still coming off of spawn? Yeah. yeah. He just he ain't been on spawn long. Oh. Yeah, he can tell you it's not he's not put on no weight. No. Yeah, that fish be, should be about uh, twenty pounds. Dump him. Get this snow here. He was hooked before. Yeah. Believe he's. Ah, I believe he's blind. Thank you.